Right, uh, looks like we're not quite online just yet. No, we are online right now. So there you go, the light just went on. So welcome to our uh, church family online. Uh, it's great that you can, uh, can join us today. And um, today we are moving on with our sermon series. Uh, and we'll be talking about your time is now. And so we look forward to, uh, look forward to sharing with you a little bit later on to that. We're going to continue in worship and our team's going to bring to you Hosanna, praise is rising. Thank you so much uh, for that. There was a line in there that said, uh, in your presence, our fears are washed away. Some people have asked me uh, at work, uh, I hear you one of these Christian guys. Uh, what makes you different uh, to me? What, and, and sometimes they intimate, you know, why are you better than me as, as if, you know, a Christian person is better, I guess, is what they were trying to say. Uh, and I was just listening to that song, and um, in your presence, our fears are washed away, is probably really the answer to the question. If you have a faith, if you believe, uh, and you have to do that to actually feel the presence of our Lord and Saviour, and when you feel that, you just sort of get this calming uh, sense over you, I guess. Uh, and um, uh, Reese chose this song today, and I was just, I guess, had an epiphany just in that one line of a question that's been asked of me so many times, and there was the answer sitting right before me. That was cool. Uh, so I appreciate that. Hey, we're going to um, do uh, have the uh, offering uh, now, and the band's going to play another great song, Amazing Grace. Jeff's going to uh, hand the bag around. Thank you.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that we've been able to meet in your house again this morning. Father, we thank you for these gifts that have been brought unto you this morning. May you use them for the furtherance of your work in this district, Lord, and in your kingdom. We ask these things in your precious name. Amen. Thank you, Jeff. So as I said before, our sermon today uh, is continuing on with our series called A Better Way. Uh, and uh, today we're going to focus on your best days uh, now. Now, I didn't choose the topic. Uh, Wes uh, did the, did the uh, series and um, some weeks ago and gave me the topic and I went, wow, that's interesting. Uh, I wonder what we can dig up and find in the scripture uh, about, uh, about this particular topic. I'm going to ask uh, the question again. I asked it before for those who are online. Uh, I'm going to ask you, are you here? Are you here today? If you are, say, I'm here. If you're on the chat line, type it in, I'm here. I'm here. Are you present? Are you present here? That's an interesting question. Uh, statistically, I know that unfortunately, some of you won't be here for long today. It's just statistics, don't get carried away about it. I know, you, I like, I know you're going to be here physically, because you're here, I can see you, but your mind will wander. Your attention will go somewhere else, somewhere through, somewhere through my message today. I'm okay with that. Uh, you may end up somewhere else. So I ask you now, are you here? Are you here? Are you present? Sometimes we get distracted by all sorts of things. And uh, one of those things is social media. I don't know who's on their phone now. I'm not, I'm not looking. Uh, but sometimes we can be distracted by it about, you know, what's coming up? What's going on in the world right now? might have seen, I don't know if it was on Facebook this morning, there's a tsunami warning for, uh, the, uh, for the coast of Queensland. It distracted me a little bit this morning, went, wow, that could end up bad. Um, or I might be thinking about what I have to do when I'm finished here. You know, I'm starting to think a little bit into the future. I'm not quite here. We get worried about the things that are happening around, you know, the bills to pay, uh, You've got, um, you know, there might be somebody that's distracting you just in the row ahead of you, just here at church, maybe. Uh, there's things that are going on all the time. But I'm glad you're here. I'm glad that you're here and you're, uh, you're with us. I don't want you to miss the opportunity this morning. Your best days are right now. And, and we're going to go into that and... Um, and see what scripture says about that. You know, scripture has some great things in there and, and, and you know, there's some great um, philosophical uh, uh, words in there, uh, some advice about how we should live our life. But today I wanted to focus on how Jesus lived his life and what can we learn from that. Uh, there's a couple of great um, uh, pieces of scripture in there. Uh, and I wanted to... Um, I guess one of the, uh, as I was reading through this, one of the most striking qualities or, or the things that just stood out from some of the things that I've been reading this week is that Jesus was ever so present in the moment that was before him. His mind was where his feet were. Does that make sense? He was ever so present in the things that happened. Uh, and I wanted to share a couple of little stories, and you've heard these before, uh, and they're not, uh, not that new, but um, uh, it describes how Jesus was undivided in his attention in things that should have taken his attention somewhere else. Uh, and I wanted to, I think we have it up on screen, uh, there's a couple of um, passages here in the book of Luke in his gospel, and you might have heard of the town Jericho. 
And uh, you might remember where uh, Jesus and a whole bunch of people were uh, walking uh, into Jericho. So let's uh, retell the story here in Scripture. And it's uh, Luke uh, chapter 18, verses 35 uh, to 43. It's a story. So as Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. So he called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way, remember he was surrounded by a whole bunch of people, uh, rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he, shout, he shouted out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see, he replied. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Immediately, he received the sight and followed Jesus, praising God. When all the people saw it, they also praised God. Now you might remember this story as a miracle. A miracle was performed uh, on the side of the road as Jesus and all of the disciples were walking into Jericho. And that's true. It was a miracle. But in terms of uh, our theme today, what was so uh, stunning about this story was that no matter what everyone else said, Jesus was reacting to the things that were right there in front of him and was ever so present right in the moment to an individual that no one else wanted to pay attention to. The disciples rebuked this man, this blind man, and then Jesus rebuked the disciples and said, no, stop need to talk to this person and brought the person in front of Jesus and said receive your sight your faith has healed you and then suddenly the man could see. In just that moment of the person coming from the side of the road across in front of Jesus, just imagine this uh, and then Jesus paid his full and undivided attention to a blind man that everyone else was about to walk past, healed the man and then continued on his way into Jericho. I think about, you know, uh, a journey that Jesus was on a journey. He was walking into Jericho and, uh, and through the town. And, you know, when you've got a task in mind and you want to get there, you just want to, you know, you don't want to be diverting all over the place. You just want to get to, to your destination, right? And I think about it sometimes when, you know, you're driving down the road and uh, somebody's got a flat tyre and often you see a lady trying to change a tyre and you go, I, you know, I should stop and help this person. It doesn't have to be a lady, but, you know, uh, I used to work in RACQ, so it was very natural for me to pull up in the RACQ truck and just stop anybody that was broken down. And it's still in me. But, you know, when you're running late for a meeting or something, you don't. You just keep driving past. When actually the person may need some assistance. I just think about that in this story here when Jesus probably should have just kept going. But he didn't. He said, stop. When... Everyone else said, keep going. Uh, straight after this story, uh, in the same book in Luke, uh, in, uh, in um, chapter 19, uh, in the first 10 verses there, another story of similar things happened. This is back-to-back -back things that happened. So Jesus and all of the disciples, and now the blind man who can now see, continued the journey walking through uh, Jericho. Uh, we'll pick up the story here uh, in Scripture. I think it's up there. Uh, so this is uh, chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and he was very wealthy. And I'm just going to stop right there. A chief 
tax collector back in the day, what, what, what sort of person was this? You've got to think to yourself because it's different today, right? A chief tax collector back then was very, very wealthy, but he got wealthy because he used to extort people with money. You know, he'd add on his little profit uh, and then add a whole bunch more on there and keep it, you know. They weren't considered to be great people. They, you know, some people would call them a thief or a criminal. Uh, anyway, so Jesus uh, was there. Uh, and he wanted, to, uh, so the tax collector, Zacchaeus, wanted to see uh, who Jesus was, but because he was, uh, because he was short, wasn't very tall, um, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed up a sycamore tree uh, to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and he said, said to him, Zacchaeus, he called him by name, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. Now these two have never met before, but called him by name and then effectively just invited himself over for lunch. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter. He, was, uh, he has gone uh, to be the guest of a sinner, they were saying. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here I am now, and I, I give you half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay them back four times the amount. Now, this was not language that was ever said by a, um, a tax collector back in the day. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to his house. Because this man, too, is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man came back to uh, seek him and save the lost. Now, it's an unusual story. Again, they're walking through town. Jesus walking through Jericho. A whole bunch of people around him have just got this guy that he's just performed a miracle on. And he now picks out uh, Zacchaeus up a figamore tree just to try and see him because... You know, he can't, he's not tall. Uh, and then calls him out by name and then invites him over for lunch. No, didn't say that. Invite himself to his house. And uh, again, he should, you know, he could have been distracted by the movement of going through town, but has found this guy and has given him his full attention was right there in the moment and has actually saved him uh, and um, transformed this person where he's now, um, you know, uh, repenting, I guess, uh, and giving the poor some of his possessions, which is never, it's like a miracle. That's just happened yet again. So there's two stories back to back where Jesus could have been and probably should have been completely distracted uh, and has paid full attention to two people uh, and, and, um, and not only performed miracles, but has given him their attention. See, Jesus was always present in the moment, wherever he went. Uh, and, you know... I guess that's something that you know we would like to be, but but unfortunately we just have so many distractions. You know, uh, 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 I guess I can only speak for myself. I tr you know I try and live in every moment. You know, and it's easy to live in the happy moments. It's uh, it's 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 happy. It's it's easy to live. You know, in the high top experiences that we have, but we're not always fully present in all moments. Jesus was. This is a learning that we take. Now, sometimes it's, you know, I'd, I'd like to be more present in some of those annoying moments. You know, uh, um, uh, I guess uh, some annoying moments that, you know, I was reflecting on last night. You know, it's funny that, uh, it's not funny, but when you have kids, uh, there's, when they're young particularly, some of the most irritating things that used to annoy me about them, you know, having a mess, being loud, 
uh, etc., are the very things that I miss when they're not there anymore. Uh, and uh, and I, I guess I found myself missing the moment because I was distracted by being annoyed. But um, it's only now, in retrospect, in times as as time goes by, that I miss those very things. I was complaining about the things that were happening in the day, um, uh, about the moments that I'll miss tomorrow, which I didn't know about at the time. All right, are you still here? That's good. That's good. We're halfway through and you're still here. Uh, there was a... Um, there was a survey done, or a, uh, a piece of research done by Harvard University, and uh, they claim that 40% of the time, uh, our minds will not be where our feet are. 47%, that's like half the time that you walk this earth, you'll be distracted by something else. In other words, you'll be here, but you'll be, your mind will be somewhere else. Pretty crazy. Um, there's... Uh, you know, in my mind, there's uh, you know a couple of things that are really distracting that help us in today's day, uh, and that is our you know mobile phones, our devices, right? Uh, statistics say that the average person touches their mobile phone phone uh, two thousand six hundred and seventeen times a day. Two that's the average person, for goodness sake. 2,617 times a day that you're being distracted, where you're leaning over and touching your phone, not being in the moment, being distracted by something else, and not being present with the things that are in front of you. 2,617 times a day. It's crazy. I'd hate to work out what I do, but uh, I'll, I'll just go that I'm average, right? But I know there are some people, probably in this church, that are above average, that exceed this that are excellent achievers uh, at these things here. The statistics say that extreme users of the phone can touch, uh, can touch. this is the top 10% now, can touch their phone 5,400 times a day. Get that? 5,400 times a day. That's a lot of distractions. They would be exceeding the 47% of your time where you're not present with the things that are in front of you. If, uh, if this is you, and I suspect it'll be all of us, because it is definitely me, uh, being distracted by these silly jolly things um, that many times a day. So nearly half of our time has been distracted and missing the opportunity of the things that are right there. So wasting time on phones is probably the top. If you Google it, things that most waste our time Phones will come up or devices, mobile devices will come up quite frequently on your search when you do that. But if it's not that, uh, then uh, there's mind games going on up inside your head sometimes. Right? I, don't know, I don't know if this is you, but for me it's like um, it's this when-then game that keeps going on up here. So, you know, when I have this, uh, then I'll be happy with something. You know, when, when I get another speaker for my audio system, I'll be happy. Or, uh, or when, I, um, when we get out of COVID, I'll be happy. Or, you know, uh, when I get past the weekend or when I have bought this or achieved that or, you know, whatever, I'll be happy. You know, the mind plays so many games with you, you just, it, they're all becoming distractions, right? It's a part of this 47% of the time that we're not actually connected with our feet. Uh, so it's tough, right? We go through like this, wishing away our current moments because we're distracted by things that we wish that we had. Or if it's not, if it's not, you know, uh, that game, it's the, it's the what if game. You know, what if I was better at something than something else? You know, I'd be happier. What if, you know, uh, what if I brought up my children better? Then I'd be happy. Uh, you know, I live with some regrets or something. Um, what if, you know, the thing that I'm trying to do doesn't work? Then, um, you know, and you, you're sort of talking yourself down off of something that should be happening right now. 
So I guess, you know, these are all distractions. This, this, this makes up the 47% of things that we do. I mean, I'm sure you can all relate to this in various different ways that we go about our life. But don't miss out what you have now pursuing what you want later because it's just distracting you from what we, uh, what we need to be doing. Uh, in, uh, there's a little piece of scripture, I'm not sure if I've got it there, Liz, but uh, in Matthew uh, 6.34, um, uh, it says there, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Don't worry, don't spend time being distracted about tomorrow because it'll just sort itself out. Let's get through today first. Let's get through today. Jesus didn't say, however, you know, don't plan for the future. That's not what he said. He just said, don't worry about the future. There's a difference there. So we're here today. Are we still here? We're still here. This is good. We've got some yeses. Uh, so why don't we live in the moment? Well, some might say it's a lack of faith that we have sometimes. Um, it's the devil working inside of us sometimes, distracting us, worrying about stuff that we don't necessarily need to worry about. I work in a very large organisation, and if anyone's ever worked in a large organisation, there's change. And you hear the rumours of the change coming before the change happens, and everyone starts to worry about what that might be. And I say to people, don't worry. It hasn't got here yet. It could change a thousand times before the change happens. Let's just worry about now and get through today and tomorrow and the next day. And when the change comes, then we'll deal with it on that day. Because we can spend people, I've seen people make themselves sick to the point of staying home for days and weeks on end Worrying about something that potentially will never happen. Ever. So surrender the past that you can't change. Surrender the past that you can't change and trust God with a future that you can't control. Surrender the past that you can't change and trust God in the future you can't control. He's in control. Remember that. He is in control. Who's had plans on travel in the last two years and they've been wiped out because of border closures and all of the situation? Like, who saw that coming three years ago? Trust God with a future you can't control. Surrender the past you can't change. Uh, I haven't got this one up, Liz, but uh, in, uh, in the book of James, uh, 4, 13 to 14, um, it says uh, this. It says, come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go into such, uh, we'll go into such and such a town and spend a year or two there in trade and make a profit. Uh, yet you don't know what tomorrow will bring. And so there's a question here. Uh, what, what is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. This is in scripture. For you are a, a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Have you, everyone ever gone up to a piece of glass and you know, breathe onto the glass and you see the mist appear on the, on the glass or the mirror and then what happens? It disappears. Plans can be shattered. We are just here, um, here in the moment. As I said before, we've all had plans over the last two years that have been shattered by COVID. This is just one global example that we've all gone through in some way, shape or form. We want to go to church on Sunday. Actually, we can't go to church on Sunday because it's closed. Who would have thought that would ever happen? But there it is. So don't waste time. Uh, surrender the past. You can't change. Trust God in the future. You can't control. 
Uh, in Psalms 118, you'll know this, uh, verse 24, it says, This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This, as in this is the day. Today, today is the day. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It's saying here, live for today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Live for today. You see, if we worry about all of these things, we can't... Uh, we, we can't do the things that we want to do. So you can't be happy when we're not in the moment because we're distracted by other things. You can't serve Jesus when you're not in the moment. You can't love people when you're not in the moment. Our, uh, our, um, our message today is um, about... Your best days are now. And Jesus is saying, live today, live it now. Don't waste time thinking about and wishing away the future. Don't miss what you have now, pursuing what you want later. It's important. If you're not here, if you're not where your feet are, you will miss the opportunity. Look, to be fair, it's easy to be distracted, right? We're all distracted. It's a part of life, unfortunately. But you know what? If, uh, if there was anyone in the world that could be the most distracted, I want to take you back to the Easter story about Jesus being pinned up on the cross. You remember that? Just visualise it just for a moment. Jesus stripped naked, nailed to the cross by his ankles and by his wrists, He's up there. He's trying to push down on his feet to try and open up his lungs to get another breath of air. I mean, this guy is seriously hurting. He's being whipped and flogged until probably some of his internal organs were, you know, coming out of his body. He was up there and someone drove a spear up into his side. Remember this? It could have been so easy for Jesus to be distracted. He was so tortured, he was barely recognisable as a man, as a human being. Nailed on the cross, taking all of this in, gasping to take his last breath. But what did he do? There was another man on a cross next to him. He was a criminal. You might recall this story. And Jesus turned to him and had a conversation with him on the cross. Remember, he, the state that he's in, he, he could have been easily distracted. And uh, it doesn't actually say in the Bible what was said, but I'm, I'm assuming it was something along the lines of, you know, the, the criminal was sorry and apologises for what he was doing. But the criminal says... To Jesus, remember me when you come to the kingdom. And what did Jesus say? He said, today, be with me in paradise. Today, be with me in paradise. In all of that, in all of the things that should have distracted him, he turned his undivided attention on his deathbed and saved another man. A man that should have should have died a criminal. I mean, who has ever seen that before? It's, it's, a, you know, it's a great piece of scripture, but we just view it in a different light. Be present in the moment. In, and the things that should be distracting you in Jesus' walk here on earth, he still gave even those people his undivided attention. You see, Jesus is fully present in everything that he does. So you can't serve Jesus uh, where you are not. If, if 
You're not where your feet are. You can't serve Jesus. You can't love people where you are not. And you can't be happy where you are not. See, this is the day. This is the day. A day that we live our life in its fullest with the things that are right there in front of you today. Your best days are now. Your best days are right now. See, God saved the best for now. Now is his grace. Now is his mercy. Now is his forgiveness. Now is his freedom and now is his power. He has a purpose for you now, in this moment. Right now, God is with us. God is with us. Your best days are now. Don't miss what you have now, pursuing what you want later. This is the day. God has saved the best days for you now, your best days are now. Be where your feet are. Be where your feet are. I'm going to ask the uh, the team to come up, and um, oh, sorry, we're it's the band. I think the band is doing the last song. So I'll just ask the band to assemble. See, time is passing. You know what an hourglass is? It's full of sand, and you turn the hourglass upside down and sand passes through that little funnel and uh, falls down into the bottom. It sort of represents our life. Our life is passing away through that little piece there and it's slowly emptying. See, uh, the problem is though, we don't know how much sand is on top in our life. We don't know how much time we have left here. It's not something that we decide. Time is passing away. And once all of the sand gets through the funnel and is emptied the top and it's all in the bottom, ironically, you can't put the sand back in the top. Or in other words, our time is done. Our time is finished. So Jesus says, live today. Live with the things that are right in front of you, that, that, that are put there right now. Don't wish your life away. Be present in the moment and be present where your feet are. It's been great sharing that with you this morning and I hope um, that's brought something uh, to you and um, I'm going to ask the band if uh, they can just share a, uh, a great song. It's a part of the message uh, and it's called This Is The Day. It's an old song um, but it's a lovely song. Thank you, band. <laughs> Thank you uh, for your message today. Lord, thank you for um, uh, teaching us more about the way that we should our live, live our lives, um, similar to how Jesus did when he walked on our earth. Lord, help us today to be aware more of our distractions and so that we can live our life each day to its fullest. Lord, help us be present in every moment. 
Lord, help us serve you in a way that we've never done before by being present in the moment. Lord, we ask for these things through your son, Jesus. Amen. Um, our benediction today... Oh, sorry, we're going to do announcements. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> we have a couple of announcements. Um, so, uh, Australia Day Picnic, uh, 23rd of January. Is that next weekend, I think? Uh, at 4pm up at the dam. Um, we've had it every year. It's a great uh, time to, um, to share and to have some fellowship, share a meal together. Uh, and the games and things that we play up there, so I'm sure it's going to be a great day. Please come on up and share that, uh, that day with us. Uh, and, of course, we've got some first aid training happening on the 20, 12th of February, uh, 9.30. Uh, make sure you no nominate for that. Um, and it's uh, here uh, in the back hall, I think. And I did have one other announcement, which is uh, Summer Splash. So for our youth, um, some, uh, Bass Fern Salvos is holding a summer splash. We're going to, uh, is it White Water World, Kathy? Uh, on the 5th of February. So that'll be a good day uh, to spend with our youth uh, and go down there uh, on that day as well. Yes. Good stuff, thank you. So, uh, so bring. Uh, so, for those online, um, uh, if you're coming to the barbecue next weekend, bring. Uh, we will supply the meat. If you can bring some salad uh, and drinks, that will be uh, fantastic. So, thank you, Elsa. Thank you for sharing that. All right, um, our benediction today. We normally have two songs, I know, but we've just got one song at the end. Our benediction is from uh, Psalms. Did I have it up there? Yeah, Psalm 118:24, which just says. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad in it. Thank you, everyone, for a, uh, for a good morning and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.